Every successful person has faced difficulties in their life and career. My guests will share with us the challenges they have overcome on the road to success. Every week we'll follow their story right here in Life with me, Patty Brule. Hello and welcome to Life with me, Patty Brule. Now my guest today, I have to read this. Jay Camirez has been the victim of unforgivable violence, but he picked himself up to battle on, finding refuge in his passion for music. He is a young unsung hero who has overcome unimaginable circumstances to achieve great success. He was the winner of the Pride of Britain Awards and Jay runs Souls of Prophecy Gospel Choir. This is wonderful to me because this choir has now given others the confidence to turn their lives around as well, just like he did. This boy is my hero and his story is amazing. <laughs> Welcome, Jay. Thank you for having me, Betty. Now, tell me, you know, what I want to know is what happened to you? Because I know you went through something really dreadful. Mm -hmm. So basically, when I was 17, um, I was already um, in like my height of my music career. I was signed and the, um, the company that I was signed to were working with the likes of the Drifters. Mm -hmm. So I was, had my single and everything ready. Unfortunately, I was um, um, attacked by seven Asian men who kind of felt that my creativity was um, being frowned upon by the community. So I was brutally attacked, put into hospital, fighting for my life. And because of that, my, my music career stopped. You know, everything stopped. My confidence level just dropped. They didn't know if I was going to live or die. And, um, you know, so the, the contract just kind of diminished and I was left with nothing, you know. And music, uh, as you would know, Patty, is my life. Mm -hmm. It's something that I, mm -hmm. I live for. It's my best friend. And to the have fruit yeah, of the soul, yeah, and to have that it, taken yeah. away from you, mm -hmm. it's like it's like it's like a child being taken away from his mother. Yeah. It's just one of those things that it's just it's just unbearable, and it was so so difficult for me. And how old were you then? I was seventeen. Good heavens! But okay. nevertheless, uh, I, I, you know, I'm one of those young people at the time. I was a rebel. You know, I didn't want to stop. I'm an optimist, and I believe that if I convict and go back with my humility intact. I'll be able to succeed again. And that's what I did. I learned how to acquire back my humility, my integrity, my self-worth, and build my own support network. See, I love those words you're using. Humility, self-worth. That's one thing a lot of young people don't know mm. that they have, you know, or should acquire mm. because it's in there, but they don't know how to get it. You know, I mean, self-worth, I always say to people, you have a reason for being here. Mm. Anybody can try and stop you as much as they can. But if you're strong enough, you're going to find it. Mm -hmm. And you are strong enough. It's what a lot of young people don't know. You are strong enough, yeah. you know. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some young people who, if they were in my position, probably will not be able to cope. That's true. Um, but um, I, I don't know what it was about me, myself. I mean, I was one of those young people that... Um, always, um, always believe that there is a way out. Always kind of like saw there is a light at the end of the tunnel and no matter what, I'm going to succeed. I always, I mean, it's something that my mother instilled me. Even though I was going to say, yeah. what were your parents like? Because I know they were strict. They were strict. They've uh -huh. always wanted me to, you know, get the grades, be a, a lawyer or a doctor. And when I told them, uh, no, I want to be a singer, they were like, what? <laughs> you want to be a singer? No, get out the door. And I said, you know what? I'm quite happy to walk out the door with those black bin liners and walk out the door, which I did, you know, and because I, I believed that, in me, I mean, my, all my brothers and sisters kind of confided and conformed to what mum and dad wanted them to become. Yes. And don't get me wrong, they're happy. But me, I mean, I kind of like saw my dad. My dad was a musician, yeah. but he stopped. But I kind of felt like I didn't know. I don't want to stop just because you you conform into a religion or you conform into a way of life. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't stop your passion. No, and that's true. Uh, and for and I always tell him, look, you know, I'm your son. And for some reason, you've instilled music in me, and music is in my blood, so you can't stop me. So what position were you in the family? I am, um, I'm, I'm, I'm one of seven, so mum was busy. 
Uh, this, uh, <laughs> I'm seven of nine, darling. <laughs> wow. You're, you're, you're like a village. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, no, so basically, so you were, um, I'm number four. Number four. I'm okay. number four. So I was in the middle. I was the favourite. Oh, uh, I like I like to think I was, um, and um, but you know they they all they all got kids and children and yes. um, what I'm really proud of now is a lot of my nephews and nieces they're all kind of like um, into classical music yeah. and well, they're in you they're in choirs they're singing I mean I've just recently been asked I've, I've got a keyboard at home that I don't use so I've been asked by my niece whether she can she can have it I said gladly because it would, what would make me more proud is to see one of my nephews and nieces following like uh, carrying on with music tradition well you have opened the doors haven't you yeah and that's what you know it's good young people out there listening to you speaking now is that you have a passion you you're not like we're not like anybody else mm. um sometimes yes you conform because that's you know your parents are there they're your i don't know caretakers and some things they say yes you follow because mm. but sometimes the things they tell you make you stronger and you don't know it. Somewhere along the line, you acquired strength to survive what you have survived. But that strength also came from your parents. I know there was strength because with yeah, mine... Yeah, I do believe that because I think love does hurt sometimes. Precisely. Yeah. See, my dad disowned me. Same, okay? same here. Exactly. My dad disowned me. And then he, you know, he was a po prominent Nigerian politician. And then he retired from politics and came to England without visa, because he had forgotten, he used to travel with diplomatic passport, you just get on the plane, you know. Oh. And they said, no, sorry, we can't let you in. Yeah. So he said, um, he said, well, I better let my daughter know. So the man said, because they didn't have mobile phones those days, thank yes. God. So he said, well, give me your daughter's number and I'll call her. And he, luckily he gave him Patty Boule, not my married name. <gasps> he hit a fan. It was at the height of my career, okay? So the man said, you're Patty Boule's father? <gasps> Two years passport. <laughs> You see, this is, <laughs> this is what happens because the other thing, the reason I say this is because you are using what, went, what you went through to help others. Mm -hmm. It is so important yeah. because you cannot take your experiences to the grave. Mm -hmm. You have those experiences to help others and you were doing it. If there's a line from a song, I, mean, I don't remember who the singer is, but she says, experience is a good teacher. Amen. You know? And I, I have always remembered that. <laughs> Amen to know? that. And yeah. um, with, with experience, you learn, you grow, you flourish. And you, you nurture and you craft your skills. And, uh, and, and, and I believe that's what I, what I did. And, and, and now that's why I'm here and I'm talking to your beautiful self. Tell me about your fashion. Tell my, 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 my fashion is uh, my fashion is quirky. Mm -hmm. My fashion is bold. Um, mm -hmm. I, I make a statement. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a while to come um, to come to this kind of like I've got uh, my my ego my uh, how would I put it my my I've got a basically a name that I gave to myself called Mr. Fabulous. I love and that. people call me Mr. Mr. Fabulous. Fabulous. Yes. And um, with music, I decided that you know you've got to have some kind of like visual presence. So yes. fashion is so important. Yes. And um, and I made friends with some amazing people, and and they they started to dress me, and and that's how I realised that in, in you know to you as well as having a great voice, you've got to be able to um, look good. Look good. You've got your own fashion line. Oh, you're going to, you're planning your own fashion line, aren't you? I do indeed. I've just um, started a fashion line called Beau Apparel. Mm -hmm. And um, we will be launching in Stowers in Savile Row, uh, which is, um, it's actually a men's tailor. Okay. However, they want to shake up Savile Row and they want men's to... Tailor. Yeah, tailor. Men's tailor. Can they tailor some things for me? The, well, do you know what? They will because we're bringing in ladies' fashion. <laughs> I'm in there. Yep. I'm and in there, Jay. a little birdie tells me that you are uh, trying to bring out your own little fashion range as well. Well, yes, so. I, I've, I've always designed what I wear. You know, I, so you I know, Patty, me and you can talk. Exactly. You we're know, so talk, London honey. Fashion Week, here we come. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk because I came to a fashion show that you organ organized. Yes, at the Waldorf. Uh, at, yeah, at the Waldorf. That was really brilliant because you brought. A diff well, you also you were a model on that too. I did. I, I mean, I brought quite a diff quite a different eclectic designers on board because I help yes. emerging designers. I create a platform for them. That's what Boa Apparel is going to do. Um, but for me, the most important thing is I want to create a platform for more like for a, a luxury high net worth who could okay. your range, um, and um, because I believe in things that are beautiful. You know, I'm a perfectionist. 
and um, things got to have a certain certain place in style. We'll talk. We'll talk. We will talk. Tell me about your your singing group. So my singing group, Souls of Prophecy. Now we've been going for over fourteen years. I've been you know fourteen, 14 years. years wow. Okay. Um, we've performed with the likes of Paloma Faith, and um, I've I've done music videos. We've we, we've been on things like EastEnders, Holby City, you name it. Um, and um, it, it's been a, a great ride for me as a gospel choir director. You know, I never, I mean, I worked with so many choirs in the past, and I was told by even leaders of choir, choirs that I'll never be like them. And but then I ended up becoming bigger and better than them and I couldn't help it but all their clientele decided to come and follow Mr. Fabulous. And I tell you what, you know when someone <laughs> says to me, you're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. Oh, I go diving straight in there. It makes you want to do it. <laughs> oh, it does. Yeah, just like, Give me five o'clock. It makes you want to do it. I, I agree. I think you just told that to the wrong person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, and it's like, do you do know who Jake Mirez is? So I, I will make sure that I, I go out because what I take with me is a personal experience. Yes. People buy into Jake Mirez, people buy into me, people buy into the person. You know, it's not just all about business. No. I, I treat people like their family. I treat people like their friends. Gospel to me is a, a, a powerful, powerful thing. The whole, the, the the voice of gospel is powerful. It's it's beautiful. It's the good news. It brings people together. Mm -hmm. So I have to treat gospel music or my choir or any clients I have who wants to buy into the choir, um, in, on on a personal level rather than business level. You know what I always say. You find the God in the person. Oh, you do. You do. Because there's God in everyone. Yeah. And that's a level on which you, you have to relate to people, you know. Because some people, I think I said that to one of my guests once, some people have God in the passenger seat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I remember my guest saying to me, well, you know, at least he should be co-pilot. I went, no, no, no. Co-pilot, I want him as pilot. I don't know what I'm doing. I want him as pilot, not co-pilot. I'll be the co-pilot of my life. Let him direct my life. Because, you know, like you, okay, you were, I haven't experienced, well, I've experienced bullying like you did. But I haven't experienced actual physical, that kind of physical attack. Except, you know, avoiding bombs during the Biafra war and actually one of the most bizarre things is seeing a body running with headless body <laughs> running oh until it trips because of shrapnel, you know. But those things give you a different value and view of mm. life. You know, I hear people complain and I want to go, really? So you think mm. you have a problem? I always look back and I look at things about the bullying situation mm -hmm. and I always say that the bullies are the ones that really are aspiring to be like you. Exactly. And because they can't be like you, they, they want to put you down and they want to make you beneath them almost. Yes. And if you know how to craft that and become above them, you can tell them, do you know what? No, you're not going to do that to me. You know, you might have knocked me once, but you're not going to knock, do me, it twice. knock me twice. You know, because I'll come back fighting stronger well you know the funny thing is they're cowards they are because they come in groups yeah i remember once i think i was seven or eight learned a vital lesson i was beaten up by three my age group mm -hmm. didn't occur to me there were three so it seemed more went home told my mother i got up across the head i'm thinking what i'm the one who's <laughs> better than bruised here and she said how old were they I t told them they were the same age <laughs> again so I went back to school in anger the next day and I picked them all out one or two times. <laughs> I thought, now we'll all get punished together. Yeah. yeah, so we all got punished together. I thought, good, because I picked one. Because the funny thing is, one on one, they can't stand next to you. Absolutely. And I learned that in life. So I'm not afraid, you know, a, a group of people, I will walk away. But if there's one, I'll corner that one and, oh, I'll get my mm -hmm. back. I'm sorry. Yeah. That is terrible. Now, what I want to ask you is, where did your strength come from? Think about I think that. strength, it's just always been there. I don't think it's something that's instilled in you. I think you're born with it. Some people have it, some people don't. I've always been born, um, my mother always said it's like, you fall down, you don't cry. You know, you, you get up and you brush yourself off. People have hurt you. And loads of people have hurt me in the past. I've been let down by a lot of people, but for some reason, I brush it off and then I'm, you know, and I carry on. And I think it's, it's to do with um, perseverance. I always persevere and I don't let anything um, 
hurt me. There's a saying that I've always carried with me is um, motivation brings conviction and conviction brings movement. In life, you have to motivate yourself. You have to be strong in order to succeed. And by succeeding, you convict in what you want to do. And that becomes a success. My goodness. Okay, I'll tell you something. <laughs> While you're saying that, I'm thinking your thought process is very, very strong. Yeah. Okay, because you've already planted the seed in your head. So you know that you will go for what you want and nothing can hold it down. Mm. And anything that tries to hold it down will only make it stronger. Yeah. Uh, what I tell a lot of young people is, and I hope I can be a, a role model to help aspire young people is, it's really important to have a good support network. You don't have to have a thousand friends. I know social media wants us to have loads of followers and what have you not, <laughs> but that's all superficial. It is. You know, but really what you need is a small group of friends that you can always confide in, that can always push you, that can always encourage you. That'll tell you the and, truth. And tell you the truth. And you need that. And if you, and if you can find that one or two people that you know that helps you a lot and a lot of young people don't have that because they, they aspire no. to be something that they cannot be yes and, and but I always say find those true values in some real friends that will tell you how it's like and that is going to be very helpful for you I mean with me I mean that's always been very helpful for me I went on to becoming a judge with the BBC um, and, and I never ever thought I would be you know I nearly give tell us about where you're, what you're judge on so basically, I was a judge on a BBC show called All Together Now. All Together Now, um, okay. Um, it's coming back for a second series. And oh, I've nice. Been, and I've been asked back. So, Excellent. Which is fantastic. Uh, but I, I nearly actually said no first. Um, and, and going back to talking about the, whole, the, the support network, if mm -hmm. I didn't have my support network, they're the ones that said, no, go for it. Because I kind of gave up on choirs after, th after 12 years. Then I moved on to fashion. And I didn't think I could marry the two together. Of course and, you can. And, and, but I did, and all together now actually helped me marry the two together, where I could be fashionable, be a fashionista, also be a judge and be able to give critique to people, to young, young singers that are performers that are coming onto stage, and be recognised as, you know, as somebody that's worked hard to, become, to do what I do in my craft and music and... And here I am. So do you give lots of talks? Do you go on motivational? I do. I do a lot of motivational talks. Um, I, you know, like I said, I help young brands in fashion, um, uh, even in music. Anywhere that there is a, an opportunity to um, give back anything that's creative, I'm there. You know, because um, I believe that um, if you can help people but give them honest, constructive advice, Yes. rather than fill their heads with things that's not going to happen. We have to be real in this world. Because we have to be real. Yeah, it's cutthroat. And it's cutthroat. You know, it, it, you said two good words there. We have, to be, we have to be real, and you have to know what reality, the real reality mm -hmm. is, okay? Because I, I always say this to some of my guests, that what shocks me is, as celebrities, we go to premieres and we dress and, you know, in outrageous things mm -hmm. so we can get the photo. Right. And then you go home and you change into your jeans. Right. Now, some of these girls see these celebrities wearing outrageous things. OK, really, I mean, exposing everything, mm -hmm. literally. And they wear this on the dark road. And on top of it, they're drunk. I don't understand that. I cannot. You know, I say to them, no, 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 no. You have to know that those celebrities only wear that for those occasions and they're safe. Mm -hmm. They arrive in a limousine and they're bodyguards and they're safe in that environment. But they're not going to wear it darker unless they're, unless they're stupid. Mm -hmm. They're not going to wear it, you know, on a dark park and drunk. That's right. It's, you know, it's, it's, I tell you, it's so wonderful to talk to you because I could talk to you for an hour. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to say is you talked on... you actually touched on social media yes that's the nemesis of young people now it is okay indeed and i always say to them hit the delete button that's my best friend the delete button and you don't have to have that no. many friends you know so, you social really... media can do one of two things it yeah. can build you mm -hmm. or it can completely utterly destroy you i mean i was i've been a victim of things like body shaming and um, um, trolls um, you know saying a lot of hurtful things um, my, myself and my partner david you know we we, we did a big commercial um, for hungry house and and we we got a lot of stick for doing that at the same time the commercial became a huge massive success excellent um and 
And um, but then what I really want to do is thankfully just just only recently I did a body confidence campaign uh, for for an underwear range called Search, and that's become such a, a, a you know such a big uh, media hit because what we're trying to show everybody is is like all that body shaming and all, all uh, social media stuff ain't gonna work because we are going to be comfortable in our skin Precisely. in our body. Tell me, do you believe in God? I do. Well, he's got his sights on you, honey. <laughs> Thank you. And God bless you because, you know, you have really shared so much for young people today. And I'm so grateful and really proud Thank to you. know you. And we will continue knowing each other and being friends. Yeah. What was amazing when we met, we just we just connected. We did. <laughs> it was just mental. So. It was meant to be. God does this, you know. He works Thank in mysterious you. ways. Thank you so much. Jay. Thank you. And for you young people out there, I have a thought for you for today. A friend of mine, Dale Brown, who is a coach of Louisiana, you know, um, basketball team in America, sent me this word, these words. Our troubles and mistakes are often the tools by which God fashions us for better things. So, like Jay said, never give up. Never, ever give up. We'll see you next time.